Section 12.6 covers image and pre-image. So let's look at these definitions first, and then we'll do some examples. So suppose you have a function f from a to b, then if you take a subset of that domain, so I'm going to take some subset x of the domain a, I can take the image of that set x, and that's just the set of things that get mapped to, right? So let's look at image first, and we'll do some examples before we move on to our next definition. So if I just ask you for f of 1, that's just regular function notation. This is not an image. So you take the number 1, you see where it gets mapped to, and you write that down. If instead of having an element of the domain inside as the input, I have a set as the input, then I'm asking for the image of that instead. So the output should be a set, and it's the set of elements where this set gets mapped to. So 1 gets mapped to 4. So I get back the set 4. So that's a lot like saying f of 1 is 4. But what's different here is that I can have larger sets as well. So I can ask, where does the set 1, 2 get mapped to? Well, 1 gets mapped to 4, and 2 also gets mapped to 4. So that set of 1, 4 gets mapped to the set 4. I can say, what does all of a get mapped to? Because a is a set. And I look and see what it gets mapped to and it gets mapped to just 4 and 5. All right, so when I take f of the whole domain, I should always get back that range or that image. So that's sort of using that image notation as one of our vocab words there. So that's the image of a set. It's just the set of outputs that you get. Now we can also look at the pre-image. That's a little bit more complicated. So for the pre-image, I'm going to take a subset of the domain. And then I find the pre-image of that by taking the x's in a such that f of x ends up in y. So I'm really going to go backwards from my set. Right, so I'm going to take some sort of b here, and I'm going to go backwards. So it's kind of like an inverse, but I'm going to be able to do that even if the inverse function doesn't exist. So as we can see in this example, I don't have a one-to-one -one function. So if I just asked you for f inverse of 4, this is going to be undefined because I have no inverse function since f is not 1 to 1 or onto. So no inverse since f is not bijective. But even though it's not bijective and I can't take the inverse, I can still take the preimage. So the preimage of 4 is the set of all things that get mapped to 4. So both 1 and 2 get mapped to 4. So that's the pre-image of 4. The pre-image of the set 5 is all the stuff that gets mapped to 5. 3 is the only thing that gets mapped to 5. So it's the pre-image of 5. I could take the pre-image of 4 and 5, and then I get all of 1, 2, and 3. Now, I can also take the pre-image of 6 and 7. Nothing gets mapped to 6 and 7, so the pre-image of that is just the empty set. I can also take the preimage of the entire set B, and that's going to mount me back to all of 1, 2, 3. So I could also say that's just equal to A. So if we look at these, right, I can, the big idea here is I can define preimages even though my function is not invertible. So I can define preimages for non invertible functions. And that's helpful for us sometimes. Whenever I have a single element whose preimage is multiple elements, that's how I know that my function was not one to one. Right? That's exactly what it means. So you can sort of think about whenever your sets increase in size when you take a preimage, that's a good indicator that your function's not one to one. So I encourage you to sort of think about those sorts of things that we can show. All right, let's try this example here. So I've got this function f from r to r defined by f of x equals x squared. And I want to find the image of f of 0, 1, 2. So let's do that first. I want to think about where 0, 1, and 2 get mapped to. 0 gets mapped to 0, 1 gets mapped to 1, and 2 gets mapped to 4. So the image of that is the set 0, 1, 4. 
And now I want to find the pre-image of that set. So the pre-image of 0, 1, 4 is all of the stuff that gets sent to 0, 1, 4. So 0 gets sent to 0, 1 gets sent to 1, but negative 1 squared is also 1, so that's also in my pre-image. 2 gets sent to 4, but negative 2 is also in there. So here, as we can see, that the pre-image of the image of some set is not always equal to that set. So the inverses do cancel each other out, but pre-images don't. So that's kind of an interesting fact about these. But again, if we have a one-to-one -one and onto function, if you have a bijective function, then you should get the property that these cancel out. So that would be a good question to try on your own. Okay, so we have this theorem that relates these different properties of images and pre-images. Um, so we're going to prove one of those here, and then there's one more that we'll talk about in class. But I encourage you to kind of think through these and see if you could think about proving those. So let's go ahead and start with the first one. I want to show that the image of w intersect x is a subset of the image of f of w of w and the image of f. So let's see how we would prove that. I'm trying to prove this subset. So what I should do is I should let some element x be in f of w intersect what the x, so many letters. What does it mean that x is in an element of f of w intersect y? Then that means there exists some a in w intersect x such that f of a is equal to x. Right, what does it mean to be in the image? It means you get mapped to by something in that set. So there's some A that maps to X. But now I just need to show that I'm in each of these images. So since A is in W intersect X, A is in W and A is in X. Since A is in W, then f of a, which is equal to x, is in f of w. And since a is in x, f of a, which is that x, is in f of that x. And now we get that x is in f of w, and x is in f of big X, so f of is in the intersection, which is what we wanted to show. Give everybody a second to kind of think through. I definitely encourage you to pause the video, have a look at this, make sure you can kind of unpack these definitions, think through what they mean. But and it seems pretty good, right? We, it seems like if I went back the other way, I should still be able to get it to work. So if x is in the intersection, it's in each of them. So it has to have something in each of them that gets mapped to it. So it seems like that would be fine. But it turns out we don't actually get equality here. As we can see in the second one, we do get equality for union, but not for intersection. So I've got a counter example over here to show that they're not equal. So if I look at my w, equaling a b and then my x equaling a c then f of w intersect x is f of just oh, that should have been a b b and then f of b where does b get mapped to that's just two my f of w is equal to w was a b those together get mapped to 1 2 f of x that was b c those together get mapped to 1 2 so f of w 
intersect f of x equals 1, 2. So we can see that f of w intersect x is not equal to f of w intersect f of x. So it is true that we get the subset, as we proved over here, but it's not true that those two sets are equal. Okay, so as a final discussion question here, I want you to prove that x is a subset of the pre-image of the image of x, and then show an example where they aren't equal. So again, think about how you could go about proving that subset relationship, and then see if you can come up with that example where they're not equal to each other, similar to what we did in the last problem.